This is Lindsay Giese. I'm the Executive Director for River Arts Inc. Back again to talk with one of our board members, Nikki Fisher. I'm going to let her introduce herself and um, explain a little bit about what she does, with what her day job is before we dig into River Arts. So, Nikki, hi. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, everybody. How are um, you? I'm doing well. We're managing. We're doing really well. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so a little bit about myself. I born and raised in Sauk Prairie and now raise my own family here. Um, two little girls, Dylan and Marley. Um, my husband and I um, have family in the area, so we still consider this our home and our forever home. So we, we love the area. You uh, should say your maiden name because people will want to know. Oh, okay. So my maiden name is, is Dirud. Um, my grandpa was a biology teacher at the high school. Uh, that's usually how people, yes, that's usually how people know who I am. Oh, I had your grandpa in biology. Okay. Yeah, I didn't, that was a long time ago, but that's great. That's so that's usually how people know who I am. Um, but I love the Sauk Prairie area. We love raising our family here. Um, the schools are great. The community's great. Um, yeah, so we enjoy every bit of it. <clears throat> Always an adventure, that's for sure. But I also work in Sauk Prairie. I am the senior creative manager uh, at Culver's. So dream job, in my opinion. It's, um, yeah, it seems, seems like a pretty good place to be, to yeah. work. I, it's been 10 years. I think I might stay a little bit longer. I love, Every I love it. I have to drop something off there at the franchise. I yeah. just want to, um, just sit in the comfy chairs and yes. go all day. Yes. It's, we gaze out the windows longingly. Oh, and I'm sure. See the beautiful so free time. Yes. Yeah. We, we love, be, we love being here. Um, it's, it's a great little family that, that works out at the, at the home office and, um, you know, it's, over 30 years that that Culver's has been in business so proud to be a part of that organization and and love the marketing team that I work in that they're great the whole Culver's team is fantastic the support center and along with all of our franchisees so I can't I can't um I can't say more about how much I love working there but along with that there's a couple other things I also teach um at Madison College I am an instructor there part-time um, I went to school there and loved every bit of it. Almost wish I could stay there and go back to school. So I did the next best thing. Uh, I started, I started teaching there. So that's been just a ton of fun. Um, kind of going back to the basics of art and design, and that has really taught me a lot too. So it's not just the the, the kids that are learning, but but so am I. And that's Did been a lot of fun. Ever think you would be teaching online, virtually? No. <sighs> so how's that? That's a learning that? curve. All of this is a learning curve. Right. Um, I miss seeing. We just last evening, we had one-on-one -on -one, uh, Zoom meetings with all of the the kids, and you know they were they were a little disheveled too. They they didn't quite know what was happening, and so. I think actually seeing and talking to them one-on-one -on -one made everybody just kind of feel a little more relaxed. Um, so it's a learning curve for everybody. I feel for them. You know, they're, they're trying to just manage through their schoolwork and, um, you know, I'm <laughs> trying to figure out how to record my demos. But it, it's been quite an experience. And the, the instructors are great. The, the faculty's wonderful. It's a great college. They do a lot for the Madison area too. So um, I'm, I'm fortunate. And uh, as, as I'm hoping viewers are also giving us a break on this low budget filming option, <laughs> I'm sure the students are as well. Yeah, you know, filming from our basements and um, you have a beautiful gallery that you're in and, you know, here, here's my basement. My, you can probably hear um, little footsteps above me maybe, I don't know, but you know, <laughs> everybody's learning a little bit more about everybody else <laughs> through all this, but yeah. It's it's been it's been fun. Um, so you I, are the current vice president for River Arts Inc. I, I am. To let you know that um, during Jared's interview, which people can um, see on our YouTube channel uh, and our website and Facebook, we already published that one. 
Um, Jared did make a strong statement that his term uh, as president ends uh, in June. So kind of, I think he's saying, you're taking the reins July 1st. How do you feel about that? Uh, He is so sweet to remind us of all of that. He slipped that in. He Mm -hmm. did. He did. Um, Well, thank you, Jared. That's so sweet. Anyone, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm always up for a new challenge. I'm always up for learning something new. It's not just a matter of, you know, trying to be a president of a board. I think it's just what can I learn and how can we grow together? So I'm not, I'm not at all intimidated by you, Jared, at all. (laughs) So (laughs) I'm excited. It's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to this. Awesome. Well, you kind of um, alluded to this already, but how have the arts played a role in your life? Um, So not just river arts, but just your entire life. Oh, well, so I like, I've always enjoyed the arts. However, I feel like I'm a late bloomer. Hmm. Um, It was, it was basically in college when I um, was going to school for teaching actually. And um, which was great. It was wonderful. And then all of a sudden kind of fell into these art classes. They were art classes for kids. And, um, well, that's sudden, really funny. I, I know. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, huh, I can actually do art. Like this is, this is actually really fun. I just thought you had to be naturally born with this type of, of, um, talent, but it's actually a, a, a lot to learn and it's a it's a craft that you have to master it doesn't always come easily but if you work hard at it um you can you can actually learn how to draw which is which is never knew that could happen but i think from there it was um it just opened a whole new world um i was able to learn new things and then uh left that program to go to madison college where i graduated with a graphic design and illustration degree, which sat in my first drawing class and was like, how they can't teach me how to do this. Like, this isn't possible. And they did. They, they like taught you how to do it. They broke it down for you. They, um, so it's really the support system that you have around you and those artists that you can talk to and connect with and, um, be a part of a process Mm -hmm. and to just round it all out. That just, broaden my whole horizons, which takes you to shows from at the Overture Center that you fall in love with. Um, I remember my first show at Overture was Rent, and I... Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. I mean, mind-blowing. So, you know, the arts have always been this thing that kind of kept my tank full. It kept my juices flowing. I um, And the people that you surround yourself with and have that creative outsource is um it's just something that you can't always find everywhere else so all right i like that (laughs) um so a lot of our viewers probably all of our viewers because if you're taking time to watch this you care about what we're doing so thank you oh thank you are are aware of all the kinds of programming that we offer so we have Mm -hmm. the performing arts series at the river art center we have exhibits there that are both student and professional house concerts here at the downtown gallery, um, art openings here, a bunch of other events, plus just the retail gallery where we feature local artists. What out of all of the things that River Arts Inc. does uh, in the community, what's your personal favorite? I was so ecstatic when the studio opened. I think I came on the board at this really spectacular time when the the gallery was expanding into the studio and got to see and be a part of all of that um which has been so rewarding to see um i think the kids programming in the studio is super fun um the art club the after school art club <clears throat> i got to teach it once christina like like trusted me with the class which was so fun and i think it was um seeing what's what's being done with the the arts program for the for the youth is really fun to see it's something that we've never been able to do before and that studio space and seeing what can be done and it's a matter of 
so if you get kids doing art and you get doing art with your parents, um, you kind of see their eyes sparkle a little bit and then just think like, hey, why don't I try something too? And they start to maybe do something for themselves. You know, then that leads into those, um, you know, drawing. I just did the drawing um, workshop with John Ribble and it just, it was so wonderful to be around other creatives and to talk about art. So I think that studio space and the programming that happens there is just so much, so beneficial, even to those who don't do art every day, the crafts and drafts. I think it's the kids program leading into adults, having more exposure to art and just taking the chance and just doing and making something, being makers. Well, I think it goes back to what you said about um, thinking that you, since you didn't naturally, well, you didn't feel like you naturally had talent as an artist, but mm -hmm. you discovered that you could learn the techniques. And um, so maybe it took you a little bit longer to bloom than some others. But I think that's what's great about our classes is that we have a lot of students that are coming in of all ages who are discovering new things for the first time and, and discovering that they can do it. And they never knew that they could do some of these things before. Well, I love the element of like, oh my gosh, I made that. <laughs> like, I can do that. That Can you believe it? And it's just this wonderment of like, yes, of course you can. Like, everybody has a little bit of creativity. Um, I don't know, you don't have to be Rembrandt the first time you do it, but it can be, it can be something special and can be personal. It doesn't always have to be perfect, but I think it's just fun and to be able to play, so. I love the studio space and what you guys are doing in there. I think it's so beneficial. I love every part of it. Awesome. Well, that's a big shout out to our gallery and studio manager, Christina Koopman. So, mm -hmm. yay. yay, Christina. All right, let me see. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give you a good question here. Okay. Um, hmm. Oh. <clears throat> oh. Hmm. Tell, well, you kind of talked about this too, but I think, I'm excited to hear what you have what you have to say about this. Tell me about a work of art or art experience that made an impact on your life, like life changer. Yeah, I think we've well, all had them. Even if you're not in an arts field still today, yeah. or you you know, I think we've all had them. Yeah, I think so. It was about ten years ago that I did. I went through Madison College, and so I was, you know, just kind of starting out. Um, my career at Culver's 10 years ago and um, all of those things all of that um, you know inspiration that you pull when you go to art school and you learn about art history and you see the the books on you know where art originated from um, and then I think my full circle moment was seeing sketches from da Vinci while in Florence, Italy. It was like a bucket list moment and it just basically took my breath away. I mean, you couldn't, you can't explain it. It was probably something I will never forget. So that, that was what took my breath away. That's amazing. How long ago was that? Well, that's just it. It was two years, a year ago in April. Oh, wow. Yeah, so about two years. Yeah, it was about two years, but it was life-changing, so. And I think it was ever since I took a life drawing class um, with my friend, uh, Chris Gargan at school. Hopefully he comes to teach a class. Okay. I don't know, Chris, just okay. saying. <laughs> just saying. Uh, um, I think, you know, he would talk about uh, the great works of art and he took a trip while I was in school. He took a trip to Florence, Italy. And I said, if I ever get the chance, I want to go there. And we finally said, what are we waiting for? Let's go. It sounds so. like uh, more trips are in your future then too. I feel like that is, uh, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Not, not right now, but in the future. Not right now, but it doesn't mean I can't plan. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Yes, so bucket list trip. What is the first word that comes to mind when you think of River Art Sync? <laughs> um, first word that comes to mind um community i would say i love that yeah i it's a community it's not just the arts community and you have this group of people with you know like-mindedness that get together and talk about art or enjoy art or 
view art. It's also the reaching out to our community. I think um, there's so many different areas that we can, the people we can talk to in our community and being the voice of this, you know, arts community is, is what I think we're the strongest at. And I mean, that's a testament to you, Lindsay. I think, you know, the, the way you um, put ourselves out in the community as this reputable nonprofit that has a goal in mind to spread, you know, the arts and the love of arts to everybody is, uh, is the goal. But I think in community and not just the, the art community, but the, the whole Sauk Prairie community and it's expanding. I know, yeah. I miss my people. The people, it's so hard. Yeah. It's so hard. It's so hard. But what you guys, like, even the, I love the listening parties on Facebook. On Facebook. Oh, they're so it's great. A little inside look at my mind, which <laughs> might be scary. But for those of you who don't yeah. know, I'm a huge music theater nerd. Yes. Huge. Huge. Uh, I don't know a lot about, like, some even modern artists, like singers. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me anything about a Broadway <laughs> show, that's my jam. You're on, you're on my team. You'll take that category then. But I think just having that outlet for people, I, yeah. right now especially, we just we want to have fun. We need to laugh and we need to forget things for a little while. So, and so um, share experiences. Like that's what, I, that's what we're trying to do is maybe we can't in person have these shared experiences, which is what the arts is all about. Yeah. But for a little bit of time, let's, we can chat about it or, you know, there's just our other mm -hmm. ways for us to share together. Yeah. Yeah. And River Arts, we're here for you. We're here. We're here. For, we're, here. Yes. we're here for you. Okay. I have one more question for you. Okay. Two more questions. Okay. Is there a question you've always wanted to ask at a board meeting that you were too <laughs> embarrassed to ask? putting you on the spot. Um, yeah, I would love to know what you really think of us, Lindsay. <laughs> Ooh, um, that's an easy question because oh. the re a big reason why I wanted to do these interviews is because a lot of the community gets to see me and they get to see Christina, but they don't get to know our board of directors who are really, you know, the, the, the brains behind it all. I mean, like, monthly <laughs> <laughs> I love that you laughed at that. Um, but we all get together and we talk about new ideas and we're looking at the budget and we're looking at programming and um, and it's a group of people who they're, they're not necessarily in an arts career um, for a living. They come from all different backgrounds and we have this shared love of the arts. Um, but I, I felt like the community should get to know a little bit of the behind the scenes and get to know our board because... I am very lucky that we have a very good functioning board. And I don't think a lot of nonprofits can say that. So. Well, I'll ask you that question again when the camera's not on. <laughs> <laughs> I would have the same answer. I promise you. Um, what I feel like. We you, uh, Lindsay. We appreciate you. <laughs> I feel like the question that every board member, like, and I never know the answer to is like, wait, what are Robert's rules again? <laughs> We make a motion and then what happens, uh, right? How many for a quorum? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't feel like an arts organization is the one to be yeah. <laughs> following that to a T, but we do try. We do yeah. try. We do try. Do we have a gavel? We have a gavel. We're, we're instating the gavel come June. Uh, I love it. Let's okay. do it. <laughs> so my last question for you is, why do you choose to support and donate to River Arts Inc.? Oh, and I think it goes back to the programming. I mean, it goes, really, it goes back to all of the things that I talked about. Um, you know, I was intrigued and on the board initially for the mere fact that I was, I wanted to have a community of people that um, were involved in the arts. Okay, so like you started there, right? It's so much more than that. And I just became so much more grateful for all of the wonderful things that you do for the community, um, all of the programming, and just the exposure um, that you provide to people and then giving them the opportunity to have an experience that they may not have ever had before. So I, 
you know, any way to make that possible for more people in this community just feels like a win-win for everybody. So. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Nikki. Oh. Uh, I didn't hear any pitter patter upstairs, but I bet oh. your kids are waiting for you. They must be eating a snack again. Cause that's <laughs> usually why they're so quiet. <laughs> snack again. I love it. Again. <laughs> again, like 20 minutes ago, a snack. <laughs> Thank you so much and thank you everybody for watching. Stay tuned for more chats with our board members and thank you for, so much for sticking with us through all of this.